Network. This is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. I am Ben Hall. Good show tonight. As we speak right now, the legislature is in a recess. They will meet again in about 30 minutes to an hour and it what in what could be uh, the final session of the year. They're hoping to wrap things up either tonight or tomorrow. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, several things going on up there. Certainly one of the most um, emotional issues has been abortion and a lot has happened in regards to abortion. We'll talk about that tonight but also just get you a sense of what's going on up there. Happy to have with us State Senator Mark Pody, Republican from Lebanon. Thank you for being here. Ben, it's a pleasure to be here. So you're up here literally while they're on recess, while they're taking a quick break, you're up here, and then you're gonna go back when the show's over. That's correct, I'll be going back. All right, we're gonna talk about several um, abortion bills that, that you have been a part of um, that I'm sure will get a lot of discussion. But let's just get a sense of what's going on up there. Do you expect to wrap up tonight? Um, ben, I. We will be done in the Senate, we think, to have everything done, but uh, there's one bill that's kind of holding us back and forth, and we're debating back and forth between the House, so that could bleed over into tomorrow. There's probably only about eight bills left, but the biggest one right now is the teachers. There's been a, a huge fiasco with the testing that went out throughout the state, and we want to make sure before we adjourn that our students and our teachers are protected from the, any kind of test scores that may have um, adversely affected them. What you're talking about is Tennessee Ready yep. and the problems with that testing. They yes. started, I think yes. they started testing last week. We've reported lots of problems in districts across the entire state, logging on to the system, getting the tests completed. And this is a big deal because teachers and principals and a lot of people are judged based on how students do on these tests. That's exactly right. Now, I've got to tell you, we have made a lot of progress in Tennessee over the last few years. Um, where we were back in 2010, we were kind of rated in, in the 48, 49th spot in education, and we have moved up dramatically from that spot. And it's only because of the good work that our teachers have been doing, and they've been doing fantastic. Um, so when something happens that, that could affect them, we don't want to take any momentum away from them or hold them accountable for things that was beyond their control. They have got their students ready. The students have been studying. Um, so when something like this happens, we want to make sure that we're there to protect them the best we possibly can. And how do you protect them? All right. So what we want to do this year is the House has passed a good amendment that says uh, we're not going to hold anything from this test score against the teachers in any of their evaluations or anything like that right now. And the Senate has passed one that says it's going to be limited to um, from 0 to 15 percent based on what the school district decides. So the House has gone a little bit farther than what the Senate did. And, and I'd be very comfortable with that House amendment. But not everybody in the Senate feels that way. So they're kind of going back and forth to see which one's going to come out. And how frustrating. I know teachers are frustrated that this happened last year it did and here we have problems again this year who how, how is the company involved held uh, responsible well i believe that we need to hold them financially responsible first off and because they didn't perform the way that we had anticipated so i believe that there should be a clawback some way that we can get some of our money back we paid good money with the expectation that this is going to happen so we're going to hold that company accountable later on in, in this year but right now as we're getting out we can only fight for the teachers and this is still going on testing is still going on so in the middle of this we don't want to abandon ship today we let's finish where we are finish these tests scores and, and such and then hold the, com the company accountable shortly. Now when I hear um, that all of that is being discussed, I don't, it seems hard that you're going to get finished tonight. It, it is, um, although we've been actually working on this now for uh, almost the whole week last week as well as this week. So it's not like this is the first time we're doing it. This is the time that we're trying to put everything together. And what we did at the end of last week, um, we felt fairly comfortable with it. But as we're talking to teachers and students and parents, we don't think we've gone far enough. So we want to bring that, that safety net, that bridge around them a little bit more and secure that a little bit more so we can assure them that what has gone on by the state is not going to be affecting them in their careers and, and their grades. So we want to be very cautious to do it right. And do it right is, is important. This time when everybody's trying to get things done and get out and the session is wrapping up, bad things can happen. Absolutely. And I would rather get it right than get out. 
if it takes me another day or two, I'm very comfortable with staying a little bit longer to, to make sure we're getting it right. Um, unfortunately, I'm only one, and it's got to be the majority that's got to do this, so it's not just me. And right now, um, it is not on the floor for us. It's in, in a calendar committee, so we've got to try and find a way to get it out of calendar committee, get it back on the floor for us to vote on it. And if we can get it back, I think we'll have the votes in the Senate to actually pass this bill to protect teachers even more. And is there anything else? So that's huge. That's going on right now. We're going to talk about these abortion bills, which are huge. Aside from those issues, what else would you say were headlines uh, this year or just maybe, maybe it's still outstanding at this point? Um, that is by far the biggest one. The other one would be the opioid crisis. And we have a real crisis here in Tennessee. Um, we have to address how can we take, uh, and it's not just kids or people on drugs, you know, that we would think would be teenagers or in their 20s. It is across the board. They can be, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s that are actually addicted to, to these drugs. And, and sometimes I'll give you an example. Somebody might have get hurt at work and they had a hip replacement or something and they got kind of caught up into these drugs and, and they just stayed on them and there wasn't a way to get them off. Um, I talked to our, our judges and people in prison we've they're overcrowded with people in drugs if we can find a way to address this in a common sense way i think it's going to help the state across the board uh, i will tell you there's a lot of companies that come in and talk to me and they say we need good qualified workers and and one of the things that's keeping them some of the people that need jobs is this drug issue um, i was with one company and they were telling me mark we have these random drug tests and we have so many people fail that we actually announced a random drug test for next friday <laughs> and we announced it that it was a random drug test and we still had people fail and we've got to find a way to do that now the governor has taken 30 million dollars to address this issue and we're working hard to see if we can't come up with some solid positive solutions in law enforcement and education and prevention to make a difference to our citizens today. On this show, we've had representatives from the governor's office and, and state government talking about his plan. Did that yes. plan pass? It passed. So that did pass. It did pass. Um, now, there might be a couple of unique twists to it or whatever, but let's say 90% of what he wanted, he got. And is there any thing out there, because the other thing we get from callers is people are frustrated that the drug companies aren't held more accountable. They have sat back for years and just watched profits soar. And it's not just because they're marketing well. You know, there's yes. clearly a problem here. You know, uh, when you sit back and look at 20% increase year after year after year or more, and it's kind of frustrating to some that they're not held more accountable. And Ben, we did this with tobacco companies. You know, there was a time that the, our state actually went into lawsuits with tobacco companies to say, this is wrong, what you're doing is wrong, and we want, we want you to feel a financial bite on this. And we would hope that our attorney general might do that. Um, however, it's interesting the way, you know, Tennessee elects its attorney general, has, gets our attorney general, much different than most states do. We don't have an elected attorney general, so it's kind of hard to hold him accountable. But I would love to find a way for us to be taking those drug companies into court to see what their responsibility is. You can't turn on uh, you can't turn on TV without seeing a drug commercial saying try this drug or that drug. And we've seen the numbers every single time that they do it, they make huge profits from these. And we got to stop that some way. All right, um, we are streaming this live on our News Channel Five Plus Facebook page. So not News Channel Five, but our News Channel Five Plus Facebook page. So I encourage you to go to the Facebook page and uh, put a comment down uh, in the section underneath where the video is playing. I'll read some of those comments. Now let's talk about um, abortion and some of the bills that came up this year. Um, there were a lot, is that right? This, this was an active year on this kind of emotional divisive issue. It was a very active year and there are strong opinions on both sides. Um, you know, and, and I gotta tell you, on one side I can understand where somebody might say, you know, it's my body, I should be able to make decisions to what it happens in my body and why should the government get involved in, in that? And why should somebody's religion or whatever stretch into what's going on within my own body? You know, and, and that's, that, that is one side. Um, on the other side, we're saying that, um, you know what, it might be your body, but there is a life in that body. And when is it that that life is, is forming to be a citizen that we got to protect life in that, wherever that life is? Um, so does it mean that only after it's born that, that you do it? Or is it at what point do we determine that that is life? Um, now, I happen to believe that it's life in the womb. Therefore, I believe that um, not just because of a religious belief or anything else, I think that if that's life in the womb, I got to help protect that life. 
So a lot of the bills that we're coming up are debating when does that life actually start. It's interesting, the longer we go into this, the more science seems to be coming on our side. And we're watching that um, the younger the people that we talk to, the more likely they're going to be on our side because they're, they get to watch the advancements in medicine and such. So we're seeing that that, that change, the younger the, the people, the more pro-life they're becoming. One of the pro-life bills, and you're pro-life, one of the pro-life bills was something called the heartbeat bill. Yes. Um, and this bill has changed. It has. Let's talk about how it was when it was initially put forward. Okay, so the heartbeat bill said that as soon as there was a heartbeat detected, then that would be a life and you could not murder that life or you couldn't kill that life or abort that life. And um, it did not have the votes in the, the a General Assembly, either the House or the Senate, to pass it that way. So we had to start talking about what would be appropriate, where we felt we had enough votes to, to bring something forward. That bill, as written, mm -hmm. if a heartbeat's detected, there cannot be an abortion, would have been contrary to what the Supreme Court has said, what, what Roe v. Wade Ab says. Absolutely. Roe v. Wade says, what, 24 weeks? Yes. Essentially, abortion is allowed up to 24 weeks. That's correct. Heartbeat could be detected after what? Um, five so weeks? Between weeks? five to eight weeks, you can get a heartbeat, yes. So there was not enough support for that, in part because people felt like it was unconstitutional, is that right? Well, you know, it's going to be interesting because as medical advances continue to go, um, the Supreme Court's changed their positions on other issues as well. And I think there will be a point in time where they're going to say, you know what? Um, we might be wrong on this issue, so when it does go back to the Supreme Court, it could be a different ruling depending on who's on that court at that point. Um, and that could overturn Roe v. versus Wade. We, we just don't know at that point. Um, and, and so that bill never made it through, so we've got we to just readdress it, and that's what we did in committee. Uh, we said, if there's an ultrasound performed on um, a lady that's expecting a baby, that ultrasound, the results, uh, of that ultrasound has to be offered to be shown to the mother or the expected mother. It now that's a dramatic change because that, that seems, it has to be offered to be shown. Yes. Could she just say, nah, I don't want to see it? She could say, nah, I don't want to see it. That's and wouldn't they offer it anyway? Why would an ultrasound be done and it wouldn't be offered? Because uh, typically all the results show that if the mother were to see the ultrasound and she can see the hands and the feet and, and moving and she can see there's a heartbeat or, or something that, that's actually happening, they're less likely to go on and go through with the abortion. But how often is an ultrasound done and then there's an abortion and they don't see the ultrasound? I mean, how often is there an ultrasound done and the person never sees the ultrasound? So what we've done in the second part of that same bill was to say if there's an ultrasound done and abortion thereafter, uh, we, they need to report that to the state. And so we're going to start knowing those numbers because we don't know how often that happens and the bill is going to say at least we're going to have a tracking mechanism to know how often that is. So I can answer that question in about a year or so, but right now we just don't know those numbers. And then opponents of that say that what that does is just put the woman who's going through a tough time, who's making a tough decision, um, it's her choice to make this decision, it's not an easy decision, it puts more emotional stress and strain on that woman. Um, it might, however, it, I would much rather have that woman be basing it on fact, and if there's more facts for her to, con to make that decision, why wouldn't we want to offer her the wide range of facts that are out there, because an ultrasound is fact, and why not let her have facts to make that decision on? So if she's going through a, a time in her life that she doesn't know, give her the best options and the best truthful facts that we can show her today, and then whatever decision she makes, she makes, but it's not because she didn't have as much information as she needed to make those decisions. So if the bill started out as you can't get an abortion when you can hear a heartbeat. That's correct. And then it ends up with, we're gonna show you an ultrasound um, if it's done, if you want an abortion. Are you satisfied with that? Because that's a big change. That's a huge change. <laughs> that, that is a huge change. Um, am I satisfied? No, I went, that wasn't my first choice. However, I, I do believe that it did this. It, it's going to give more information to the expectant mother. And, and I believe that the more information that's out there that a mother can have, the better it is going to be for her to make that decision. And if she still sees it and wants to go with an abortion, what, you know, that, that's her choice. Um, so we tried to do it where it was a compromise. And there's a lot of times that it, it is, you know, we're just going to have to come together in some middle ground to move, move a little bit. And that's what we're, we're going to do. And 
and this was the best we could do at this point. I think we had almost everybody on board when we were done. So everybody was totally opposite to start with. When we were done, everybody said, you know what? We're not all happy, but we're not all mad either. So we all got something. And when it comes to abortion, that's, that's saying something. All right, we're going to yes. take a break. Sure. There are other bills. There are other abortion bills. And we're going to have somebody from Planned Parenthood on Monday uh, talking about one of the bills we'll talk about here um, that, 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 I guess, takes money away from Planned Parenthood. But we'll, yeah. we'll take a break. If you want to call in, there's the number. 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. We're also streaming this live on our News Channel 5 Plus Facebook page. So go there, write a comment. We'll be back right after this.